Hi, I'm Brian, and today we'll be talking about the ACCA paper P5, March-June 2017 past year paper, and we'll be looking at requirement A from question 3 of this paper, and uh, on my right-hand side here, you have my five-step approach to answering a P-level question, and this video will be covering steps 1 and 2, and a little bit of step 3 as we work our way through the question prompt. So first of all, we are going to assess the question. So let's take a look at the question requirements over here. Uh, first thing we always need to take a look at is the key verb, which in this case is assess. Now assess means you need to look at the information which is provided to you in the question, and you are supposed to make some kind of judgment. Assess usually means you have judgment on some some kind of standard, whether it's doing something or not doing something, is it good or bad? So there's some kind of judgment here. So what are we judging? We are judging NJN's uh, existing warehouse information system. So that means they've already implemented a system. We're going to look for evidence relating to this system and then we're going to assess it or make a judgment on it. And what is the judgment on? Whether or not it is effective. So we're looking at effectiveness in reducing waste and also adding value to NGN's workflow. So there is a process involved here. So we're going to reduce waste and add value throughout this process. Okay, so before we continue, we need to establish what exactly is the meaning of reducing waste and adding value. So you can see on the right side of my screen here, um, I have listed the items in bullet point. As usual, this, this video um, is not an answer per se. We're just answering, doing the first three steps of my five-step process. And the next video will probably answer the question for you. Okay, so let's talk about reducing waste first. Reducing waste would mean that we are using our resources quite efficiently. Right? We don't want to use excess resources or have resources used with no return. And then that is closely related to adding value. If you use a resource that generates no value to the workflow, that is probably a waste. And this can be defined here. We're going to give the customer what they want. So value in this case means giving the customer what they want so the customer will be happy. You generate value for customer. That's how you get business. And in this question, where can we see what the customer wants? You will find it over here in this part. The sports equipment manufacturer has a service level agreement covering the accuracy of picking, which is over here, and the proportion of customers' orders successfully fulfilled. So there are two requirements that add value to the customer. Basically, it is picking accuracy as well as successfully filling customer orders. So any process which does not give value and cr do these things correctly, that is a waste. And uh, we're going to try and identify that within the question prompt. Okay, so the next part of my video here would be to find relevant points within the question. So basically, we have thoroughly understood the question requirements and we're going to go through a question and pick out things which are important to answering the question. We're going to ignore things which are not important to answering this particular requirement. You can see the requirement at the top of the screen here. So first of all, you have uh, physical packing lists come in containers. You will find this somewhere about here in the first paragraph. Yeah? So it's a physical packing list and let's go on. Duplicate packing lists need to be requested from suppliers if they are lost and you will find that over here. Now, one issue with physical packing lists is that, well, you only have one copy and because you only have one copy, it's easy to lose it. it may not be your fault, it just could be the whole shipment came and there's nothing with it. So, and when it's missing, you do not know whether the shipment is complete or not and you need to clarify and that leads to delays. So we need to talk about that probably later. Okay, um, here you have the next line item which would be the packing list is manually input into the WIS every 48 hours. You would find that over here 
So whenever, one good thing to remember about P5 is whenever you see the words manually input, that is always a chance for human error, especially for something which is as repetitive as, well, inventory management uh, over here. So humans might get tired, they will make mistakes. And it's only done once every 48 hours. That means you have 48 hours where you do not know what you have. Right? That's something to keep in mind when we answer the question. Next line. Goods are unpacked into a sorting area awaiting input into WIS. So we have that over here. A sorting area. So you have 48 hours of goods which are just sitting there and not processed into the WIS. That could lead to a problem. We need to talk about that. Items are stored haphazardly. So this word comes from this part here. They are stored wherever there is available warehouse space. That imagine if you arrange your house like that, just put everything where you want, where it, there's space. It'll be all over the place and you're trying to run a business here. It's difficult. So let's go on. You have clients do not have access to WIS inventory levels and they need to communicate via email and that would be over here. So there is going to be a delay if there's any discrepancies. So imagine you're a customer and you want to know, okay, um, I need three pieces of, of item X. You know, so you email them. And then you wait for them to reply. Oh, do I have it or do I not have it? And then you somehow, it will take a few emails before anything actually moves. So that is a delay again as well. Um, let's move on. You have physical picking lists which are printed out. So not only is the receiving lists physical, the picking lists when you want to dispatch items is also printed. You will find that over here. Okay. Again, physical means manual. Manual means you have human error. Over here, picking lists have a lot of information. You will find that they show the quantities of items to be picked as well as the item's 12-digit codes over here. So you're going to have a huge long list of all the items in your warehouse and you're going to have another column with all the numbers to be picked. You probably have um, different order codes. It's going to be one big mess. I'm not sure how they arrange this picking list and that's probably something we need to talk about later. Okay, so now we are here. Let's continue. Um, common errors in quantity and location of items. And if you look at the question, this is a long part. You will see that over here. 8% there's problems where the item is not in the correct location or the quantity specified is wrong and you probably can link this to our earlier identification due to the floating uh, floating uh, goods which are received and they are still floating in the sorting area for 48 hours before being input and then you have human errors as far as location is concerned because it's arranged haphazardly this will probably link up later when we answer the question Okay, and it is dealt with a special report. Every time you have a missing item, you have to investigate it with a special report over here. And it's manually extracted from the WIS. The warehouse manager has to do it. It's not an automatic thing. And again, you see here, you have to manually reconcile the missing items with the manufacturer's items. And once the discrepancy has been found, you have to inform the customer via email so the customer is to wait for you to complete your search and then after you found the problem then only you inform the customer again more delays there so later when we talk about adding value and uh, reducing waste you probably can see that these things which are just directly extracted from the question you probably have an idea of what you're going to write about already okay so one thing about students that they will always ask when they answer is when do i stop well if you have the 15 minutes reading time and you'll be going through the rest of the question you might identify a few things so I will help you here and explain how that works first of all is that the next paragraph paragraph 4 seem to contain events that means these things have happened due to the inefficient WIS you have um, deteriorating KPI you have increased absenteeism you have accidents. So these are things that are as a result of a poor WIS system. The next paragraph would be paragraph 5. And this contains what the customer has demanded. They threatened to end their contract. And these things here 
is what NJN's trying to do. Hopefully, what they are doing might, might satisfy the customer, and we're going to evaluate later whether it's working or not. And subsequent paragraphs from here onwards, they seem to be talking about the management consultant which has been hired by NJN. Okay, so this concludes my part one video and uh, we will be using the information which we have identified in this video to form our answer and to answer the requirements of the question. Okay, so stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching. You can download my sample answer in the about section of this video and as usual, good luck with your exams.